The first game in the semi-finals in the first semi-finals of the winner bracket for the World Championship 2020 between Imperialist from Russia against Mr. Smog from Ukraine is all about to begin. It's gonna be Elves against Isengard, Good against Evil on the map Westfold Edit. Let's get it started. Ossi Hafner, welcome. Floki, welcome. Jokic, welcome. Uh, Tom, welcome. Alright guys, on the right side we have the green elven player Imperialis from Russia against the blue Isengard player Mr. Smog from Ukraine. I can't tell you how important this series is gonna be. Because whoever wins that is gonna move to the finals of the winner bracket and has at least secured the cash prize of $60 with a great chance and potential to win the big cash prize $320 by winning the tournament. Okay, so we have... Uh, Mr. Smog on his main faction, he likes to play Isengard a lot. He was picking Isengard almost every single game so far in the World Championship. On the other side, we have the green Elvin player Imperialist who was doing a great job with the Elvin faction yesterday in the quarterfinals against DJ Premier. So we have an early barracks upcoming from uh, one Malon tree into the second one. Two furnaces into the Uruk pit from Mr. Smog into the third furnace. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Warchan is being picked already from Mr. Smog and Rallying Cole has been picked also from the Alvin player Imperialist in the first game. By the way, we have a delay on on the stream, so I'm, I'm sorry if I miss anything, guys. Just for your information. Okay, best of seven, right? Yes, it's best of seven. The first units are gonna be those Lorian Warriors and the Builder from Imperialist is gonna scout the area from the Isengard player. He will be able to see the Furnace, he will be also potentially able to see the Uruk Pits here. Which means he doesn't need to be afraid of any warp packs early on. And yeah, he, he indeed was able to see that. He's so lucky that there are no crossbowmen coming out. Because imagine crossbowmen are joining the battlefield. He's too far away from the fortress to build a wall hub. So he would have... No, he would have died in a second. Uh, he's now running for his life. I'm assuming he's fast enough to get away from the Urukai. Lorian warriors are moving through the bot side. And the Urukai, they won't be able to see them. The second unit are gonna be those crossbowmen from Mr. Smug. He might be forced to retreat, uh, the troll was able to hit him, but he should be able to get away. And Rallying Call might be used here, by the way, to take down this furnace fast enough. On the other side, Urukai are a little bit slower, that's why Imperialist will be able to get those Lorian Warriors right in front of the Malon tree and to body block those Urukai from the Isengard player Mr. Smug. Okay, so he didn't commit to this one, he committed actually to this one, and Mr. Smug already was forced to demolish this furnace very fast. Same goes also to this one. Uh, Rhythm, thank you so much for the follow, 7311, appreciate that. Two farms without rallying call, exactly. That's a great start into the first game. Warchan has been used offensively, and rallying call has been used defensively. The builder is also body blocking quite nicely, and look at this. Imperialist is body blocking him so hard, he can't actually get in between the structures, but the builder is gonna be taking that for that. Maybe he was body blocking his own builder, and even though he wants to be able to take down this Malon tree, he, will be able, he was able to kill, to kill the Builder, and some of those Lorian Warriors were also getting damaged, and he also forced his opponent to use the Rallying Call defensively. On the other side though, two Furnaces are taken down without the use of the Rallying Call, so that's a great start after all, besides losing the Builder, which is always a big feels Batman. Uh, we have 350 command points for Isengard's player, one power point collected after the War Chant. On the other side, Almost the same amount of power points collected, 400 command points available for the Elven player Imperialist from Russia. He's gonna creep the Warg layer at the bottom right side with those Lorian archers, he's at least gonna kill the Wargs potentially. He won't be able to kill the layer. that's gonna take them a lot of time. Because the damage output from those archer units against the creeps, against the layers, is being nerfed big time, so you will need ages to take it down. Okay, those Lorian Warriors surprisingly are tanky and they are able to withstand a lot of these damage from those crossbow men. Yeah, they won't be able to deal any more damage, but they are able to scout. Might be even able to see the upgrade from the work pit, but that's not gonna be the case. No, he didn't see that being upgraded to level 2. So he might only expect some of those work packs, but, you know, Mr. Smok is gonna get those work riders on the field instead. He's gonna creep this offensively at the bottom left side. He might also be able to capture this uh, signal fire afterwards. We have more uh, archers and Lorian warriors coming. He might also make the transition for the pikemen. That's gonna be indeed the case. Because he will need some, so, some sort of counter units to deal with the war riders from Mr. Smug. 
Smog on the other side is 350 command points still against 400. But remember, Smog was not able to kill any of these Malone trees, and this one especially is all about to hit level 2, while, while he was losing one of those in the front, so only two of them from the start are remaining on the field so far. He's gonna creep the troll layer in the middle of the map with those pikemen and crossbowmen. He has also Urukai on the field and Warchant is gonna be ready pretty soon, at the same time with the rallying call. Uh, creeping the troll layer in the middle of the map gives you more benefits than creeping a work layer. It gives you more treasure, by the way, which is really nice. But Imperialists might be able to contest and potentially even steal the creep here. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. He's not gonna be able to steal the creep or the treasure. Smog was able to secure that and we have Lancers now coming from the stable here, from the Elvin player Imperialist. Um, we have War Riders on the field now, they should be easily able to deal with those uh, Lorian Warriors, not a big deal. And now, after seeing them, Imperialist has to make sure to always keep pikemen around the archers, that's really important. He's also command points capped right now, and he has only one pikeman up on the field, and that might not be enough. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. I feel like if Isengard has the power points he needs for the, for the Kribane, he might be able to win those fights early on until the Alvin player will have more archers or the Enshrouding Mist ready from the spellbook. Okay, so 400 command points for Isengard and 450 command points for the Alvin faction. Rallying Call is available, but so is the Warchant. And we have a huge army in the middle with two Warg Riders, Crossbowmen and Pikemen on the field from Mr. Smog. It looks like he wanna commit to that fight. Imperialist is making a use of these trees and the Alvin passive to get stealth around them. The Warg Riders, they were barely able to get away, but they are actually not taking as much damage as I was expecting them to take, but they are slowed down. With that being said, they can trample them down. And they're gonna die very quickly, as you can see. He lost both of these battalions very, very fast. Very, very fast, without being able to deal any kind of damage, and that's a huge victory right there for the album player Imperialist. Everything is falling apart for from Mr. Smog. The Urukai are still doing a great job with the shield ball formation and hold ground stance, but the Lancers should be more than enough to take them down. That's a huge victory here for the Russian player Imperialist. Not only that, but he was also able to sneak one of those Lorian warriors to the side of Mr. Smog, and the furnace has to get demolished. The reason why Smog is always demolishing them is obviously he knows he can save that, and he doesn't want to give more power points and experience to his opponent who already has collected 6 power points after the rallying call and is only 4 power points away from getting the entrudding mist from the spellbook. He's gonna also have to sustain, which is something Mr. Smog won't have, and Mr. Smog's command points and resource income are also not looking that great. Remember, he will need the Cremain from the spellbook and then he might also be forced to go for the devastation because again, his resource income right now is not looking that great. Okay. So a statue and a well are coming up for Imperialist, he should be easily able to heal up over time. He has still only one barracks and a stable level 1. The barracks is also level 1. We have Kribane finally unlocked, which is gonna be helpful in those fights, especially around this area, because you will need that Kribane to nullify the leadership from the statue, otherwise you won't never be able to you will never be able to win those fights. The furnace here in the backside will also be taken down. And everything is falling apart while the Elven player is pretty much untouched. He didn't lose any of these Malon trees just yet. All three of them are level 2 as you can see. So he's getting 75. Oh, that's not level 2 just yet, but it's very close for that. He's gonna get from these three 75 command points and building now his second barracks. The Lancers are keeping Mr. Smog very busy and that's really nice for the Elven player as he's building a huge army in the middle, which is gonna make it almost impossible for Mr. Smog to commit. At this point, he was also able to creep this work layer at the bottom right side. At this point, Mr. Smog has to rely on the mistakes from Imperialist. Um, the, mis the mistake from Smog was to commit here to, you know, to this fight. He didn't see the pikemen, he had to press S. They got slowed down and then they actually got stuck in between the units from the Alvin player. And when they can trample, they won't deal any damage. And when, you, when they are trapped like this, they're gonna die very, very quickly. And it would be a mistake, in my opinion, again, to commit to that. He has Kribane, which is gonna, you know, debuff the enemy units and nullify the leadership here. But I feel like Imperialist has too many archers on the field and some great protection with those pikemen with the porcupine formation in the front side. Eight power points collected from Imperialist now. The Warg Riders, they need to do something. They need to actually, you know, buy some more time for Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog has to get back into game. 
Sharku might be a great choice, because Sharku is a great counter to the clumped units with his splash damage. The Malon tree here will be taken down, but he might lose all the Warcriders for that. Uh, if he's not paying attention, that's gonna be also the case. He's actually paying attention, he chooses to fight with the old ground stance, but the whole ability is not gonna be enough to deal with those Lancers, and they will be taken down. Now, uh, Imperialis is going for a counter attack with Lorien Warriors, Pikemen and also Archers. Charku has to be careful, very careful, because those Pikemen are gonna deal incredible amount of damage to the Orc hero Charku from Isengard. And he has a huge army coming also from the middle. 695 command points for Elves, 9 power points collected, 525 command points for Mr. Smog, 2 power points collected after the Warchan and Kribane. The furnace in the front will be taken down, and Smog, you know, Imperialist is making a great choice, not engaging when he knows he can't achieve anything, he doesn't want to sacrifice any units, and now he could just group with every single one of them and go for a big rallying call play. But I feel like at some point he will definitely need the transition into the ends, because Elven army, as we know, is struggling when it comes to take down the enemy structures. Okay. Charku is chasing down those Lancers all the time. Smog is still in the game, everything is still possible. Sharku can do some work actually against the archers. And the builder from Imperialist, that's the second builder he's losing, has been taken down. Um, that's actually a bad thing because if you lose two builders, you need to repla you know, replace them all the time. They cost 500 normally, but you can reduce the cost with those uh, statues. He's gonna commit to that fight now. I don't know about that. He's gonna also use the Kribin, but Mist is ready now. And there are just too many archers to deal with. And cavalry support is arriving as well. The Malon tree is gonna be taken down. Urukai are quite tanky, we know that. But elves, there are just too many of them. Kribin is not getting focused down. He can't target that, obviously, when there are enemy units around. The Lancers, they need to be very careful. You don't want to engage when you don't see anything. He's gonna be able to get away now. The power points are rising from the Isengard's player, but also from the Alvin player. He has collected three power points already, and he's gonna use the Vision of Palantir here. He wanna see those units. The statue has to be taken down. The Mist is still active, by the way. And now Sharku is coming. Ooh, Sharku is coming. We know what we have seen this couple of times. If he gets into the back line against clumped archers, he can devastate the entire army by himself. And Imperialist knows that. He chooses to disengage, but again. This fight was won once again from the Russian player. He's building multiple statues, by the way, and now Kribin is gonna be on cooldown. That means no more nullifying leadership from the Isengard player, Mr. Smog. He's also building, actually, look at this, how many... Uh, that's uh, from um, Mr. Smog, but how many statues he's building, that's crazy. He has also Glorfindel now on the field. He has well here in the front, well in the back. So he's building a lot of sustain, a lot of leadership, and slowly but surely moving forward. Moving forward, building more. Moving forward, building more. And then he has always one more stage show in a well in the backside. Even, you know, if something goes wrong, he can always retreat and heal up once again. So it's now the turn from the Alvin player. He's gonna go for a counter attack. And that's a perfect situation right there. Camping in front of the two Uruk pits. The crossbowmen, they're gonna get damaged the second they are coming out. Charku is still on the field, keeps chasing uh, chasing those um, chasing those Remander Lancer Battalion. Glorfindel is only level 1, he has to be careful, but that's a huge elven army. But Charku, again, he's such a great counter to that. Ooh, they are so clumped now. Just fight, just fight now, I wanna see that splash damage in its face. <laughs> the Malon tree offensively for the BM will be taken down. That's a clumped elven army and Charku likes those. Sharku likes those! Sharku loves those! Oh my god, he was able to kill so many of them! And let me check his level, he's almost level 4, and that's what you wanna do against elves. You wanna get the Sharku on the field, who's a great counter to the clamped units. And now Isengard push, can push him even back, but he needs to be careful because he doesn't have Kree being ready. And here, elven player will have more spots with the statues in the back for the leadership part. Sharku is level 4 now, but the Alvin army is getting devastated. Sharku, the one-man hero, Haldir has to be careful, he's inside the Isengard army. Glorfindel is fighting against Sharku, Mr. Smog has to make sure to disengage here, he's taking way too much unnecessary damage. Haldir might be in trouble, but for now he is still quite healthy. Yes, heal, which was already used before, but the archers and the army from Alvin player Imperialist, 
is being taken down. During all this time, he was also able to kill some of those furnaces. He keeps doing that all the time, by the way, with those lancers. And now, Charco is being used offensively. The statue is gonna be taken down. Glorfindel has to retreat against the buffed pikeman. And Wildman of Dunland summon on top of the statue is here, which might be a mistake. I think Devastation is the better choice because the resource income still from Mr. Smog is not looking that great. And maybe Lourdes could be a great choice in this situation because, as we know, Lourdes is a great anti-hero, so you can, you know, cripple down the enemy heroes all the time and take them eventually down once you're level 4. But he's gonna be able to take down multiple Malon trees here. He was also able to push him back. Pikemen were able to keep those furnaces here in the backside alive. He's gonna be able to, you know, replace those furnaces over time. He was also able to deal with the archer units here with the Urukai. Aldir is getting level 2. But Elven player now is forced to build defensive expansions. He has 600 command points collected. Mist is gonna be ready. Wildman of Dunland. Sharku level 5 by the way, but has to be careful. Is quite low and has to disengage now. The Mist is gonna be ready any second. 650 command points, but look to money from the Elven player. He has still so much money collected. He has over 2300 resources. He has triple barracks and a stable level 1. He never made the transition just yet for the level 2 barracks for the Mirkwood archers just yet. But Sharko, guys, holy quacamole, is the one-man hero Isengard needs in those situations. 8 power points collected after the mist, heal and rallying cold. On the other side, we have 625 command points now for Mr. Smog. He has level 3 furnaces up on the field. Workbit is level 2. 2 Urukbits, both level 1. He's gonna be able to capture the signal fire at the bottom left side. Charco is regenerating over time. We have some pikemen. They are gonna go for the last creep remaining on the, on the map, Westfold. This is the work layer here at the top right side. Lorfindel is now level 3. Blade of Purity is unlocked. But remember, Blade of Purity is not as effective anymore as it was before. Because the armor part got nerfed from 100% increased armor to 50. So he's gonna still take a lot of damage. So he can't actually YOLO it and go in your army and be immortal, that's not gonna be the case anymore. Okay, but on the bright side, the Alvin player has still many units on the field. He has hero advantage, he has two heroes against one. Haldir is level 3, will eventually gonna get level 5 for the leadership. Mist is very effective in those skirmishes as well. 735 command points still for the Alvin player, so he has a great amount of resource income. He's not upgrading the barracks just yet, because he keeps spamming units all the time. Uh, Glorfindel is gonna be used to take down the furnace here. Should be able to do that quite fast. The power points are rising. He's gonna commit now. Vision of Palantir has been used. The Vork Riders are doing a great job and there are no pikemen around. That's a risky move here, definitely, from the Elven player. Devastation was picked and used, which is actually great against Elves when you think about it. Because what is the Elven passive? They are getting stealthed around the trees. And what is what does Devastation do? It kills the trees and turns them into resources. So it's like a win-win situation. You are denying them the invisible invisibility possibility. Also, Haldir has been taken down, but also you are getting money from the devastation. Come back? Oh, it looks like it. 735 command points, 12 power points collected for the Alvin player. He was also using Mist here offensively, by the way, and yet he lost the fight big time. Now Isengard can go for a counter attack. And Isengard didn't use his Kribin and Warchant, and Rallying Call is still on cooldown, so he has the buff advantage, he has the debuff advantage as well. And he might make something happen here. We have some pikemen, they were able to take down the level 2 furnace on the backside. Urukai, they should be easily able to deal with them. It looks like Glorfindel is being forced to, do, to disengage and retreat to his own side of the map. This Malon tree should be protected by those Lorian warriors and pikemen. I, you know, Elven player is still out of money collected. He has over 2,000 pretty much all the time. We have now Sharku hitting level 6. Level 7 will be very effective with the Man Eater. He has a lot of sustain, almost heals back to full health. And gets, you know, 100% armor, which is impressive. And 50% increased damage. Warchan is gonna be used. Um, Glorfindel is here, Blade of Purity is available. But the power points are rising. And he might go for the Eagle Ally summon afterwards. And right now, I don't think Isengard is in a situation in which he can counter those. Because he doesn't have as many crossbowmen on the field as he will need. 16 power points collected. Heal, will be, heal is being used on the army here. Sharku can still be very devastating, by the way. We need to keep an eye on Sharku, but Eagle Summon is gonna be picked. Might be also used defensively, and that's gonna be the case. On the other side, Isengard's player has collected 13 power points, but he's gonna go for another Industry power point from the spellbook. He's using Industry... 
on the furnace level 3 in the backside. So he has now industry plus devastation. And with that being said, good eagles for smog. I agree with that. The eagles not gonna do anything. They are also not dealing too much damage to the heroes. So ch chasing down the Sharku might not be the best choice. Elven player will be able to defend himself. The only good thing for Imperialis is the fact that Isengard's player didn't even pick a 15 power point spell just yet from the spellbook. So he's far, far away from the 25. While the Elven player can go immediately to the flood and he's only 20 power points away from that. Mr. Smog on the other side has to pick a 15 first before he can go for the 25. So he's over 40 power points away from getting ready. Sharku, I think, has been finally taken down. We have now Lourdes on the field. They should be able to take down the Furnace. Builder has to be careful as well. Maybe the Furnace in the backside will be taken down as well. It's only level 1, so they're gonna deal a lot of damage. Elven player now being able to push him back. Wildman of Thailand is gonna be ready soon. Oh, Glorfindel has to be careful. He should be able to get away though. Heal is on cooldown, remember. 550 command points for Isengard. 560 for Elven player Imperialist, but... Industry is being obviously very helpful. The Vestation is going to be ready soon as well. The Wielder has been taken down as well, unfortunately. And the Eagles, after all, were still able to deal great amount of damage. They were able... And Sharku was able to get away. Okay, I take it back. They didn't manage to kill Sharku. Sharku is, is still alive. But they were able to kill two Furnaces and a Wielder. Now the Armory is coming up for Mr. Smog. He might also need some of these Lumber Mills later on. So I can see him going, going for the 15 as to fuel the Fires upgrade from the Spellbook just to increase the resource income even more. Sharku, by the way, is now almost level 7, very close to that. Glorfindel is level 5, his level 10 is gonna be very effective as we know, Haldir's level 8 with the Golden Arrow is gonna be very effective as well. Okay, those Lancers are doing a great job and Smok is now once again on 475 command points, but look the money from the album player, he might go for Legolas or Transwheel. That's both possible, he has enough money for that, but he, I think he's not gonna go for it. He might go for uh, Haldir again. Because Haldir got killed before, remember? So he's prob probably reviving his uh, fallen hero Haldir once again. Okay. And he has still a great amount of resource income. You know, he has level 3 uh, Malon tree here in the back one as well. So he is not done just yet. He's gonna go for the foresight. Uh, gonna invest 5 power points for that. 670 command points, almost command, point, command points capped. The Isengard player has command points capped already. He has only 475. And he also purchased the upgrade on the Fortress for cheaper upgrades, as you can see. Um, but he needs to expand. He needs to make sure to build more furnaces and kind of keep them alive. Because those Lancers from Imperialists are doing a great job all the time. And so is Glorfindel. Doing a great job for the map control and taking down those furnaces over and over again. Okay, so he's gonna use Vision of Palantir offensively to see what's going on. He's gonna also summon the Waldman of Dunland here. Gonna use Warchant for that. And the Malon tree is gonna be taken down. But the Lancers are coming. They need to be careful. There are some pipemen and he's paying attention. Kremen is gonna be used. And it looks like Smoke is fully committing to that summon and trying to deal as much damage as possible. Smart move from Imperialist, demolishing that immediately. He knows he needs to keep those, um, he needs to keep demolishing them in time because those Waldman of Dunland with the pillage, they will keep stealing money all the time. Oh, Glorfindel, I think, has been taken down. I think that was the case because Talos is letting me know in the chat, in the Observer chat. Yeah, I think Glorfindel is down. He was also able to kill some of these Lancers. He might be able to finish off this Malon tree in the backside as well. Elven player now is forced to fully commit for defense, but he's gonna lose this Malon tree regardless. 10 power points collected now, and that was enough time for Mr. Smog to recover. He has also Lords level 3, level 4 is gonna be very effective as we know. Triple barracks for um, Imperialists, but all of them, including the stable, is level 1. The transition has never been made into the Mirkwoods just yet. The Vestation is gonna be ready in like 2 seconds. The statue is going to be taken down, but for this attack, Smok is not going to have his buff and his debuff available. Unlike the Elven player, who has Mist, Heal and Rallying Call available. Um, okay, the Vestation is being used. Well played Smok, yeah. And now, but Smok can actually stall. Like, he can beat off everything and then just disengage afterwards. He's going to use Rallying Call and Smok now has to just disengage. That's a smart move. You can't win this fight with double buff. You don't even have your debuff ready. And if, you know, if you fully commit to that, he might also use the mist 
and the fight would be very one-sided. Just bait off the rallying call and disengage. Yes, getting also more reinforcements from the double Uruk pet. Uh, armory is now level 3, heavy armor is already purchased. And that's gonna make those Urukai and Pikemen quite tanky and very hard to take down. Impi is now using the mist in the middle of the map. The Warcribers were able to get into the backline, we need to keep an eye. But the Watcher is coming in clutch and taking and wiping out everything what is there from Imperialist. Holy guacamole! The Watcher, that was one of the best Watchers I have seen and it is happening in the semi-finals game number one. So juicy by Talos, I have to agree with that. Oh, he was beating him so nicely. And now, look his command points. He has 60 from 760 command points available. He has nothing left anymore on the field. He has one pikeman, that's all he got. And he's being used offensively. So, but, you know, he has triple barracks, so he will eventually get many, many units at pretty much the same time. But his resources are not looking that great as well. Charku is level 7. The Warcry Riders are here. The Malone tree in the backside, level 3, might be taken down. Now he has upgrades in the Isengard units with the upgrades. But the Eagle is coming from the from the Fortress. Imperialist is gonna still call it GG. He knows he can't win this game anymore. And the first game in the best of seven will be won by the Ukrainian player, Mr. Smog. As we're gonna jump right into the game number two. Holy moly, boys. Pretty nice game, I gotta say. The game number two, this time on the map, sort of while Isengard against Goblins this time, by the way. Imperial is switching from the Elven faction to Isengard. On the beautiful map, sort of while the Pirates map. Let's get it started. Alright. At the top side, we have the blue Isengard player, Mr. Smog, who is leading the series 1 0 against the green Goblin player, Imperialist. Who is 1-0 behind, obviously. <laughs> He's gonna build two Tanners. And on the other side, we have two Furnaces coming up for the World Champion of 2019. And he's doing a great job also in the World Championship 2020. He might be the World Champion once again. But Imperialist is gonna try his hardest to deny that from happening. He's gonna build two Tanners into the Spider Pit. On the other side, we have two Furnaces into the Uruk Pit actually, and not Clan Setting this time. We have seen this matchup also, you know, yesterday between DJ Premier against Imperialist in the quarterfinals. And DJ was starting with the clan setting on the map Westworld. He managed to win this game, by the way. But Smok is gonna start with a Uruk Pit instead. Two furnaces, Uruk Pit, the third furnace is coming up. That's the build order from the Isengards player. On the other side, we have two tunnels, Spider Pit into the third tunnel. Into the Spiderlings. Spiderlings are quite mobile units, they are great for harassment, they are great to fight against the Wildman, but they should never they should never be able to fight against Urukai or Pikeman. Okay. Powerpoint wise, Warchan has been picked from the Goblin player, and Isengard player can also go for the Warchan or, or Kribane. Uh, that's a possibility as well. But he, I'm assuming because of the Uruk pit, he's gonna start with the Warchan, but I might be wrong. Let's see. The builder from Imperialist is moving through the bottom right side, gonna build a tunnel here, offensively, kinda, in the middle of the map. And the pikemen from Smog are gonna go for a creep, potentially. Let's see what they're gonna go for. They're gonna go for a creep here, as you can see, this is the waypoint he's choosing. You wanna creep this troll as soon as possible, because those signal fires against the goblin faction are crucial. They're always nice to have. So you will have a great vision control in the middle of the map, left and right. You have two of these, and Isengard's player want to make sure to grab them really fast. The first Spiderling Battalion is moving forward, and remember the Warchan is ready. The clan setting is coming up now for Mr. Smog, but I think he's gonna commit to that with the Warchan, and yeah, that's gonna be the case. The Furnace might be taken down quite fast, and Smog is gonna use his Kribin defensively. Waiting for the crossbow man with the Kribin, they are losing a lot of damage, and they will need a lot of time to take down those uh, Furnaces. And the crossbowmen are just in time protecting this one. And he might be able to protect this one in the backside as well. Because he has only three furnaces now. And they are really close around the fortress. So, you know, they need, while they need to move all the way around this crossbowman, they can always choose the short distance to walk. And they should be easily able to protect that against the spider links. As you can see, they are taking a lot of damage from those crossbowmen. At the same time, Smog was also able to creep the troll layer at the right side. Treasure has been secured as well. 
Now he's gonna capture this signal fire, and that's a great start. Oh, wait a second. Another battalion is coming now for harassment, but the Kree is still around, so they're gonna get debuffed. They lose a lot of damage and armor. They're gonna be taken down quite fast. Yeah, Imperialis was able to, you know, kind of damage them quite nicely. This one is pretty low, but he was not able to take it down just yet. And that's a win-win situation for Mr. Smok. Not only he was able to defend himself, but also he was able to creep this one at the right side. Nice defense by Talos. Agreed and confirmed. The tunnel has been taken down as well. The transition now into the first Goblin Cave and the second Goblin Cave is being made. How that fast? <laughs> He's surprised about the, about the speed of these uh, pikemen, I guess. How fast they were able to creep this one. Now he's gonna move forward with four battalions of those spiderlings. Let's see if he can achieve something. Smok is moving forward. He has one Wildman of Dunland. He might be using that one defensively with the whole crown stance and place it right in front of the furnace. Because I'm assuming Imperialis is gonna try to take it down. But Smok might be able to deal massive amount of damage with this army moving forward. We have Wildman, Pikeman and two battalions of Crossbowmen. The order here from Smokey has to be careful. He's gonna get away. Um, Smok has a great vision control with the signal fire, so he will be potentially able to see the builder from Imperialist, the bottom right side. Clumping quite nicely against the tunnel, but that should not be enough to take it down. But the reinforcements is already coming. Two power points collected, 400 command points available for Mr. Smok, 400 command points and one power point collected for Imperialist. He's gonna commit now, surrounding the furnace quite nicely, maximizing the damage output, and he has just too many, too many spider links on the field. Let's see if Imperialist can defend himself, but the Spider Pit is gonna be taken down quite fast. The torches has been purchased, and the tunnel is gonna go down, and when he can keep those Wildmen alive, which is easier said than done, because they are quite squishy, they are dealing incredible amount of damage to the structures. Okay, he has only Banner Carrier left. That should not be enough to take down the Goblin Cave, I'm assuming, but he has also Crossbowmen dealing with the Goblin Warriors, no, no big deal. But, you know, destroying the Spider Pit means that Imperialis has to rely on those four battalions of Spiderlings he has, and if he loses them, no more Spiderlings any soon. Okay, uh, but this Goblin Cave is gonna be protected, Warchan is gonna be used offensively on those crossbowmen. He's gonna be able to kill so many of these Goblin Warriors as he's also using the Kribin. He might be actually able to take down this Goblin Cave if he's trying, because it's very low and Goblin Caves in general are pretty low health uh, production buildings. Banner Carrier is doing his thing, slowly but surely. Cave pads are gonna be used also, no. Warchan is available, but he's gonna use it defensively, I'm assuming. Uh, he might be forced to. And Impy should be just trying to take down the Spiderlings very fast, but, you know, there are just too many units, and I think he should not be able to deal too much damage here with those crossbow men. But he was forcing him to use the Warchan defensively. He killed the Spider Pit, he killed the Tunnel. Killed a lot of Goblin Warriors with this attack. I think it's worth it. GG is incoming already. And the game number 2 will be also won by the World Champion of 2019. 2-0 it is after the game number 2. And Smok has a big advantage now. Holy guacamole. We're gonna jump right into the game number two, 3. After a short game in game number 2. Nice Sue. The game number 3, this time on the map Sakura Forest 2 between Imperialis from Russia against Mr. Smog from Ukraine is all about to begin. The score is 2-0 for Mr. Smog. He's only 2 wins away from entering the finals of the winner bracket. Isengard against Elves once again. We have seen this matchup in the game number 1 on the map Westfold. At the bottom right side we have the blue Isengard player Mr. Smog against the Elven player Imperialis at the top side, top left side. This is the map Sakura Forest 2, by the way. This is the most recent 1v1 map we have in the map pool of the World Championship. Two furnaces for Mr. Smok, two Malone trees this time, and not our early barracks this time for Imperialist. Okay. Um, Urukpit is coming up at the same time. No clan setting again against elves. That's quite interesting. I've not, I've not seen this quite often, to be honest with you. Actually surprised about this uh, choice from Mr. Smok and curious about how effective this is going to be. Two Malone trees into the third one and Elven player is actually going for Eco. So he's building multiple Malone trees first. He might go for the stable and I think that's gonna be his choice. He's gonna go for the stable. 
And Stable is a great choice, definitely, against um, the Wildman of Dunland. Very, very great choice against the Dun against the Wildman of Dunland. And they're gonna get trampled down, they're gonna get one-shotted. And Smog will definitely need to make the transition very fast into the Pikeman from the Uruk Pit. Because that's a great, great, great counter. Blind counter, by the way. Okay, power point wise, Rallying Call has been picked, and Mr. Smog can always go for the Warchant or Kribane, like he did last game. Let's see what's gonna happen. And now he's gonna go for the Uruk Pit immediately, anyway. But the first Wildman of Dunland has to make sure to choose a different pathway than those um, Elven Riders. Because if they are gonna run right into them, they're gonna get trampled down and you will lose the entire battalion very quickly. I hope he's gonna move to the bot side, let's see. And yeah, that's gonna be the case. He might go for the offensive creep here, by the way, at the top left side. That might be his choice. And now the barracks is coming up at the same time for Imperialist. His builder is scouting the top right side. And I'm curious now about the pathway of those Lancers. They might go immediately through the bot side and trample them down. But they might also go the short way, which is the river here, to reach the side of Isengard's player Mr. Smok. More Wildmen are coming now. And he's gonna make more of them and going for the crossbowmen actually. And that all of the units Smok chooses to get on the field for now are a bad choice against the Lancers. Yeah, the Lancers are gonna move through the river and they're gonna run straight into the Wildmen. Now Smok, after seeing them, has to make sure to make Pikemen. He has zero protection and they're gonna get trampled down. Smog making sure to switch to the whole crown stands. Rallying call is gonna be used. And Smog's goal here is to keep them busy as long as he possibly can. But the wild man, did they purchase the purchase the torches? Nope, that's not gonna be the case just yet. I think he has no money for that. Yeah, it's expensive, but he's gonna do it now. He's gonna do it now, and you will be surprised. But the lancers, though, oh, no, they are they need still time. Warchan is gonna be used. Is Imperialist paying attention? Because if he doesn't, it's gonna get bursted down in a second. Look the damage now from those Wildmen. They have incredible amount of damage output. They are level 2 now. And they might be able to take down this one in the backside as well. But the Lancers, never mind, are gonna join the battlefields now. These Lancers are forced to retreat. So I feel like it was one for one. Isengard's player actually didn't even lose a Furnace. So he didn't lose a Furnace. All the Furnaces are still up on the field. He has 350 command points against 300. They're gonna get trampled down, so a lot of money was invested and also the powerpoint war chant was invested for those wildmen, but they were only able to take down one of those Malon trees. Could be much worse, obviously. Okay, yes, more of them on the field, crossbowmen were also getting trampled down by those lancers. Yes, two battalions of them now, it looks like Smok is gonna go for the creep at the right side. And he needs to make sure to make multiple pikemen now. And kind of block the pathway. Maybe you need to make them like this. You know, you make like two battalions. One of them at the river here. One of them at the river here in the porcupine formation. And try to, you know, get more vision control. Try to get uh, more protection around both the sides you might get attacked from. Okay. I was able to creep. Level 2 now. They're going to have the self-regeneration over time. Uh, the Lancers, they need to avoid fighting against the pikemen. One barracks. And he's using those units very defensively. This battalion is almost level 2, but he will definitely need to well, which is coming up now for the regeneration. Using the mobility part of those lancers, this furnace should be taken down, I'm assuming. But Smok doesn't want to demolish that just yet. We want to make sure to deal some damage to those lancers first. No! It's not going to be taken down. Smok will be able to keep all the furnaces alive for now, but this one is quite badly damaged, so Smok maybe has to make sure to keep a pikeman around this area. Or well, the builder here from the Alvin player Imperialist might be in trouble at the top right side. This Malon tree, is, can, he, can he get away here? Because he's kind of trapped, right? I should be able to get away now. The Lancers are just lurking around, looking for a possibility to take down those furnaces, but Smog was able to protect himself quite nicely. This one has to get demolished and will be getting demolished. 400 command points, his command points kept. Has nearly two power points collected after the war chant. On the other side, we have two power points collected, 350 command points, and he's also command points kept right now. The Lancers, they are always being around, very annoying to deal with for Mr. Smog. He needs to make sure to keep pikemen around his own side of the map to keep those furnaces alive. But he's gonna go for an attack. 
They have even the torches, perches, but they are not protected from those pikemen. The pikemen are kind of not in position. Lances are getting slowed down regardless, but, you know, losing those wildmen with those torches is gonna hurt you big time. Because it's a 350 resources unit at the end of the day, and he was not able to achieve anything with that. The Lancers, they will be able to get away, the barracks, you know, quite tanky, and the Malon tree not even touched. Great defense, but on the bright side, he was forcing his opponent to use Rallying Coal kind of defensively, and that's gonna give Mr. Smog the buff advantage he needs. Now he needs to make sure if he wanna make those Wildmen of Dunland, he has also clan setting level 2 now, getting those extrovers on the field. You wanna make he needs to make sure to keep enough pikemen with those wildmen and go for the attack before the rallying call is gonna be available once again from the Elven player imperialist. Four power points collected, so he's very close for the Kribane, which is gonna be needed to nullify the leadership here in the backside. 400 command points for Isengard, 300, 435 now for elves. Um, but those lancers, they are the difference in my opinion, because they keep smog busy all the time. All the time. Smoke is very, very busy. He's gonna use Warchan now in the middle of the map. This, Vi this Vipan Extrovers, they are not protected. And the Lancers, if they can catch them, they might be able to take them down very quickly. Smoke doesn't want to commit to that wall hub because he want to make the best of the Warchan advantage now. The Smalon tree is gonna be his first target. The Lancers are still at the bottom right side. Imperialis is trying his hardest to deal as much damage as possible with those lancers but will he be able to defend himself because he is very close for the creeping and you know it can actually mess up the entire army from the alvin player who is relying on the leadership from the statue in the backside smog has now the power points he needs for the creeping he's gonna go for it immediately he's gonna definitely use it here offensively he needs to he wants to deal some damage Lancers! Oh, the Lancers are running it down into the pikemen. The entire battalion has been taken down. And that's the protection Smog needs. Do you see that? He has pikemen inside the wildmen in the porcupine formation. The Kribian is gonna leave. Oh, the Kribian was used too early and will be taken down by those archers. <clears throat> Sorry. Alright. Okay, the Baraxium will be taken down next. Leggy stream? Really? Okay, the barracks here will be taken down next. Potentially. He has still many extra words on the field. The Lancers, they can't absolutely do nothing in this situation. And that's the only barracks he had. Never mind, he was building one more in the backside. So he has still a barracks up on the field. But losing a barracks always hurts you. And during all this time, he was also keeping his opponent busy, and he himself was untouched around this side. Um, okay, I don't know, because my uh, bitrate is looking pretty nice, and I'm not dropping any frames, so I can't tell you what it is. But I might be forced to restart the stream after this one, and lower the quality settings maybe a little bit, so maybe it's gonna fix the problem for the game. Number four, boys. Okay. So, clan setting level two, Uruk pit level one. One Uruk pit, one clan setting is all he got. No heroes on the field. 575 command points collected. Six power points after Warchan and Kribin. That's just able to creep this one as well at the right side. 460 command points. Five and a half power points collected after heal and rallying call. The Lancers, they are kind of damaged still. I don't know if they can actually achieve something with the push. The Swern is here, is uh, level 1 only and has zero protection, so he might be able to take it down. Um, guys, don't worry, I will be restarting the stream for the game number 4 after this one and lower the quality settings and the bit rate, and hopefully that's gonna fix the problem. But we need to kind of finish this game number 3 first. So hold on guys, I got you. Fiesta, true. Okay, so the furnace here has been taken down. Isengard is forced to retreat from the top right side. He's gonna go for the attack with Wildman and Pikeman, a uh, Wildman and Pikeman combo, yes. The small on tree is unprotected and Smog will be able to take it down. 
You have now Sharku joining the battlefield, and Sharku was doing a great job in the first game in the uh, in the Isengard against Elves on Westfold. The Malon tree is gonna get demolished, and Elven player was actually able to force Mr. Smog back from this side. Lancers are doing a great job, but now Sharku might be able to chase them down all the time, and that's gonna be the case. This Malon tree is also unprotected, and in this situation, Imperialist has to make sure to demolish that really fast to not give any more power points and experience. When you know you can't protect that, I think the best way to deny your, you know, to deny your opponent the power points and experience is just demolishing that immediately. Okay. Oh, Sharku is hitting level two already. Nisengard might go for a big counter attack from this side. 575 command points are waitable. 535. Okay, the Thresher is gonna be secured from Isengard's player, which is really nice. But he's gonna lose his units here potentially. The Wildman of Dunland or the Wildman Extroverse, they should be able to get away. They are also level 2. And Smoke is creeping many of these work layers, by the way. That's why he has now. Oh, he has also Wildman of Dunland summon ready. Warchan ready and Kribane ready. Or oh, that might be very devasta devastating now if he's using them all together. He has 625 command points against 585. And the good thing about the Wildman of Dunland summon is the fact that you can use it on top of the enemy units. But that would be a suicide mission, in my opinion, because he has Lancers on the field and they might be able to trample them down very quickly. And Imperialist doesn't even have his. Oh, we need to keep an eye on Sharku. He doesn't even have his um, miss just yet. Oh, he's gonna use a Wildman of Dunland indeed on top of that, and that's what I meant. They're gonna get trampled down the second they are getting summoned. Heal and Rallying Call was used. Warchan and Kribin is being used as well for the debuff and buff. The Lancers, they were easily able to take down the entire Wildman army the second they got summoned at. But Sharku might be able to do something here. Sharku has to get... Oh, but Sharku is very low. I don't know about that. You need to keep an eye on Sharku, definitely. But Arrow Volley was actually used offensively and killed a lot of units here and that should be enough to defend. Arrow Volley, interesting choice definitely, but in this situation it was pretty much needed. And Sharku was barely able to get away, he's quite slow. Kinda unfortunate there for Imperialist not being able to take him down. But a great defense after all with the right choice of the power point from the spellbook, the Arrow Volley. But I feel like uh, Mist is just a bit more reliable in many, many other situations because Elves, without the Cloud Break and without the Golden Arrow and, or Starlight, they don't have a stun. And in this situation, Smoke was not able to dodge the incoming damage, but in, now he knows that he has Arrow Volley. So he knows he will not have the Mist any soon. No Mist means no debuff on the Isengard army, while he will have his Kribane to debuff the Elven army. So that's might not be the best choice for elves but we shall see 675 command points for isengard five power points collected after the wildman the wildman was kind of um, a big mistake in my opinion it did absolutely nothing for mr smug we have 735 command points now for imperialist charku is chasing down those lancers all the time three power points collected and now also glorfindel on the field from the elven player stable level one double barracks also level one and Imperialist is actually having a great amount of resource income, but we have seen this also in the game number one. Mr. Smog was behind all the time, and Sharku, the one-man army he is, was able to bring him back into the game. Alright. Let's see. We might see a fight here, around this side. Sharku is level 3, healing up over time. Uh, level 3 Furnace is pretty much untouched all game long this time. Isengard has a great amount of resource income. One Uruk Pit only, so he might go for the second Uruk Pit very fast as well. These Furnaces here are unprotected, so he might lose every single one of them. Isengard is going for a counter attack. They have also Lords on the field now, almost level 2 already. Sharku is looking for some sneaky Malon trees. He will be able to find one, and the Builder might be in trouble here. He's not paying attention. Yeah, he might be able to take down the builder, but we need to keep an eye on the big army here. Warchan is on cooldown, but it's gonna be up very soon as well as Kribane. 
Builder is running for his life, but he's very low and Charku will be able to finish him off. Yeah, the Builder from Imperialist has been unfortunately taken down. Um, He's gonna hit level 2 from that, right? He's getting so much experience from it. Yeah, level 2 and even a bit more. The amount of experience you are actually gaining from uh, killing one furnace with Glorfindel is insane. Entire level and a quarter. That's a, that's a lot. Okay, um, but we have anti-hero on the field, Lord's level two and a half. Once he's level four, you know, even Glorfindel wants to be able to move. And you can't move, you can't deal any damage. And, you know, the second your Blade of Purity is off, Isengard's player might be easily able to finish you off. Mist is not ready at all while he's on cooldown. Warchen is gonna be used. He needs to make sure to not use the Kribin very early, but he has the Mist upgrade on the Fortress. Rallying Cold is gonna be used defensively now. And Kribin? Uh, Kribin is gone already, right? I think so. I can't see it on the field now. Yeah, that's, that's, look what he's saying. That's why you need to make sure to not use it very early. If you do that, the archers, when they have nothing to attack, nothing else to attack, they will be bursting it down very fast. Now, he doesn't have any uh, Kribin around, any cave pets around. That means leadership can't get negated. And the Elven army will be just outclassing the Isengard army in this situation. Oh, but, 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 come on, attack him one time. Oh, oh my god, he's gonna devastate everything now. Oh, he's so strong. He doesn't care about the damage. He's unkillable. He's so strong. Like, he was getting attacked from so many archers at once. But I was expecting him to kill a little bit more there. He's gonna use the Vision of Palantir to see the enemy units. 650 command points. Sharku is still alive. The Malon tree is gonna get demolished. Elven army is forced to retreat to the fortress. The statue is gonna be taken down very quickly. It's very squishy, by the way. Only 1000 health. If he can take down the statue in the well, and that's gonna be the case, by the way, or that's gonna be Fiesta. There are no pikemen around, so he needs to be very careful against Sharku. The statue is gonna be taken down now. Sharku is level 5. Refuses to die. Quite tanky hero against archers, by the way. Um, and Sharku against elves is a must purchase in this situation. I think from that what I've seen in this series so far, in the first game, but also in this game. Sharku from Isengard is the way to go. The builder was barely able to get away. Sharku is gonna heal up over time. Uh, Arrow volley might be available for the next fight. 10 power points collected now. He might be forced to go for the mist. The Lancers are still doing a great job. Elven player has still 600 command points, by the way. It's not like he's poor or something. He has a lot of money. On the other side, we have 700 command points. Industry being obviously very helpful on the Furnace level 3. He's gonna get a lot of resources from this one. And, uh, you know, he has also 700 command points collected. And Elven player is indeed going for the Mist. So Mist is gonna be available. Arrow Volley is gonna be available for the next fight. Lourdes is level 5 now, though. And leadership will be unlocked. Okay, Lancers are committing on the crossbowmen and extroverse. Extroverse, I mean, they are only like there's one crossbowman, but he's gonna be taken down. Mist is gonna be used. Wildman of Tunland on top of the enemy units once again, but that's a mistake because it does absolutely nothing for um, Mr. Smoke right there. They die in a second. That was the case, he lost almost every single one of them. But he will be able to push him back. And Saru, really? Where is Saru? I don't see Saru. Uh, he's here! Saruman is on the field, ladies and gentlemen! Naisu! Oh, he needs to be careful now. Double careful against Clumped Army. Because oh, Erovole is incoming. Smoke is not paying attention! He does now, but still lost a lot of his units. Saruman, we need to keep an eye on this guy, on the wizard. On the wizard! Oh, yeah! Almost level 2, which unlocks the fireball. He's pretty strong. Level 5, he's gonna shine bright like a diamond, but GG is being called now. And the game number 3 will also be won by the world champion of 2019. Mr. Smoke has a clean series right now. Holy guacamole, boys. What a great performance from the Ukrainian player, Mr. Smok, in the semifinals of the world championship 2020. Pretty nice. The game number 4... It's all about to begin. We're gonna have Isengard Mirror this time. And that's the first time, by the way, Imperialist picks the Isengard faction. When you can't deal with it, just pick it yourself. You know, 
Isengard's mirror on the map Holy Nerid. Imperialist has to make sure to win this one if he wants to reach the, fi uh, the, the finals of the winner bracket. If the green Isengard player Imperialist from Russia against the blue Isengard player Mr. Smog from Ukraine. Two furnaces coming up from both the players. Borchan has been picked from Mr. Smog already and Imperialist didn't pick anything just yet. Alright. Nice, 250 command points, obviously, like, there is, nothing, uh, there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, the thing is that no one is building an early Barak, so they are always going for two furnaces with Isengard so far. And we're gonna have a Uruk pit from Mr. Smog, and a Warg pit from Imperialist. So he's gonna go for the Warg packs, and Smog is gonna go for the Urukai and Pikemen. And Urukai are a great choice, by the way, against the Warg packs. They are very strong, they should be easily able to win the 1v1 situation. But Imperialist, because of the Warg Pit start, can go for the Kree Bane now, because the whole ability of the Warg Packs is completely re replacing the War Chant uh, from Isengard. Isengard must be heavily nerfed by Imperialist, by the way. Um, okay, two Furnaces, Uruk Pit into the third Furnace, into the Urukai first. On the other side, two Furnaces, Warg Pit, third Furnace into the Warg Packs. Okay, Warg Packs, they are great for harassment, they are quite mobile, um, but I feel like you will need multiple of them on the field to deal the damage you are looking for. And let me guys know in the chat if everything is alright now with the stream. If you can see everything clear and if it's not buffering anymore, hopefully this is already fixed now. That we don't have any more technical difficulties today. Okay, so Urukai are joining the battlefields now, into the crossbowman next. Warg packs are moving forward. Clan Stealing just confused Imperialists, I think, potentially. But Sharku was definitely the biggest win condition, in my opinion, against the Russian player Imperialist, because he didn't, you know, he didn't know how to deal with this guy. And if he reaches the backline where your Archer army is being clumped and ready to get smashed by the mighty Warg hero Sharku himself. Okay, the work packs are using the whole ability for the buff. Um, they should be able potentially to take down one more furnace, but the crossbowmen are here on the fields now. They might be able to protect. And building a wall up here is very smart. This way they need to move around, and the crossbowmen, they are able to deal the damage they are looking for. Okay, we will have Urukai now. Kribin is being used from Isengard. Player Imperialist and Warchant being used from Mr. Smug. Uh, Normally, this fight statistically should be in favor of the work packs, but Urukai, they should be easily able to win that fight. Because they are quite tanky with the shield ball formation and whole crown stands, and the work packs are just not. Um, they don't have the damage output they need to burst them down fast enough. This makes sense. So he needs to wait for one more, but we have also crossbowmen coming now from the Uruk pit. So the furnace, I think that's the goal from Imperialist, should be protected. Also, this one is from Mr. Smog was protected. He is also building a work pit now. He has pikemen and crossbowmen on the field. They are gonna go for the creep on the right side. Uh, the Urukai, they will still be able to damage that furnace a little bit, but they won't be able to take it down because there are not many units remaining on the field anymore. And Imperialist was able to hold himself quite nicely. Um, okay. So, Warchan and Creepin are, are both on cooldown. Uh, we have one power point almost collected for Imperialist. After the Kribin, 400 command points available, 350 command points, 1.5 power points collected actually from the World Champion 2019, Mr. Smog himself. Having a fantastic performance in the best of 7 series so far, perfect score, 3-0 undefeated in this series for now. And he's not gonna go for the Warg Packs, he's gonna go for the Warg Riders. But the, he's gonna lose the Furnace here for sure. Nice clamping here, making sure that every unit is able to attack. Game is freezing now from time to time. I hope that's not gonna continue like that. Is this best of seven? Yes, Revolution is. It's best of seven. And the finals is gonna be best of nine. So the way it works, and maybe you are kind of confused in the brackets. In the brackets, you see this as round three. But this is actually the semifinals. And the semifinals in the bracket is the finals of the winner bracket. Because we are running a double elimination tournament. We will have three finals in total. We will have a finals, which is going to be the next stage um, in, the, in the winner bracket. We're going to have a finals in the loser bracket. And then the winner of the finals 
of the winner bracket and the winner of the finals of the loser bracket is gonna are gonna face against each other in the grand finals. Like we will have three finals in total in the double elimination tournament. He's creeping the work layer at the bottom right side. That's gonna be the second work layer Mr. Smoke is grabbing for himself. The work bags are getting a lot of a lot. Hey, Bobo, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Fun, welcome as well. Um, all right. So I mean. Mr. Smog was able to push him back quite nicely. And he has a lead also in terms of power points. So he is two power points away from his own creepy in, while Imperialist still needs four power points for his war chant. Uh, luckily, he has some units to defend. One pikeman to keep those crossbowmen alive. Uh, and Mr. Smog definitely had, is more macro involved in this game on the map Holy in edit because he's creeping quite nicely and he's even gonna go for the creep at the bottom left side the troll layer which is actually nice for isengard faction if you think about it because you are able now to make those black orcs quite offensively by the way they are quite cheap for the for the quality they they actually offer you they are almost as powerful as urukai but they cost much less than urukai they cost 250 each only and the inn at the bottom left side might work like a like a second barracks for you. Okay, but that's a bad creeping here from Mr. Smog, definitely. You wanna you don't wanna be clumped against him. He's gonna deal a lot of damage. This one might not work out pretty nicely. Even if he takes it down, he won't have many units remaining on the field anymore. So it's gonna take him a lot of time to creep this one. But I think he should be good to go. Okay, we have some small fights here between work riders from Mr. Smog against the work packs from Imperialist. At the top side. Okay. Uh, creeping now the last, one of the last remaining work, work layers on the map. There is only one more at the top right side. The smoke is gonna be able, was already able to creep this one. And this one. <laughs> and this one. And this one as well. That's crazy. That's why he has such a big advantage in terms of power points, by the way. He has almost five power points collected against two and a half. The furnace here has been luckily taken down. I mean, Imperialist now has to make sure to deal some damage. But we know the fact that Warc Riders are just better. Uh, Imp playing too defensively? Exactly. Imp, Imp is playing very defensively with his units. He has a huge army. He is just waiting for Mr. Smog to attack. Because, I mean, obviously he needs to play very defensively. He's 3-0 behind. That's his last chance. If he wants to make sure to reach the finals. Smog is performing very nicely. Gonna use the war chance now. The clump against the work pet level 2. Creebane is gonna be used from oh, early Creebane once again. It's gonna be taken down very quickly as you can see yourself. Bad Creebane definitely there. The war riders are coming. Now the Creebane from Isengard player Mr. Smog. Which can't be taken down quite fast enough. It's not even taking any damage besides from the fortress. It's gonna keep debuffing the enemy units all the time. The army from... Imperialist is falling apart, and Smog was already able to take down the work pits level 2 before the second battalion of work riders could make it out. That's the only battalion of work riders he has on the field, by the way. The builder here from Imperialist has to be careful as well. If the crossbowmen are gonna focus him down, he might die in a second. And Talos is saying it's GG already. We might see a GG incoming soon from Imperialist. And Smog, guys, holy moly, proves everybody that he deserved the title last year. And that he deserves it even this year with this incredible performance in the best of seven. Isengard's main, by the way. And I told you guys, Mr. Smog in those important games, you should never ever underestimate him. He knows what he's doing, he knows how to come back, he knows how to snowball. And even against a great player like Imperialist, managing to win 4-0, that's impressive. But the game isn't over yet. But the Nightmare of Imperialist, Sharku, the war hero from Isengard, is joining the battlefields now. And I feel like after this games, after this series, the most hated hero of Imperialist is gonna be definitely Sharku from Isengard. 550 command points available for Mr. Smog, 475 for Imperialist. He has Warchan, Kribane, 3 power points collected. We have Warchan, Kribane, and 8 power points collected. That's a lot. And because of the work pit, which was which got destroyed before, he can only make the work packs now from the new one before, he, or he needs to invest the 200 resources once again. And if he doesn't, 
you won't have any war riders on the field anymore. That means Smog can always go for the Wildman of Dunland summon offensively with the next war chant. We have also Sharko on the field now from Imperialist, taking down those black orcs from Mr. Smog. It's the bottom left side. Oh, nice trample here with the war riders. Black orcs. That is just too much to deal with. The furnace level 2 has been taken down. This furnace is gonna be taken down next. MP is falling apart, has only 400 command points left. Again, 600 from Mr. Smog and Wildsman of Dunland is ready. There is no counter to that. Clan Seating is getting upgraded to level 2. But GG is being called and a perfect score after 4 games only in the best of 7 series between those two players. But it's not the end of the world for Imperialists just yet because remember there is a loser bracket existing in this double elimination tournament for the, for the WCS. And with that being said, Impi can still advance in the loser bracket and make it to the finals. So they might potentially face against each other once again uh, in the grand finals. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. A uh, great and incredible performance and everyone who was betting on Mr. Smog, guys, to get your points. Smog knows what he's doing, knows how to punish his opponent, and holy quacamole, guys. Don't know what to say. So this means now, uh, Smog with 4-0 clean victory against Imperialist, moving to the, I mean, to the finals, this is finals. Waiting for Ave Havi or Sauron, which is also gonna happen today, by the way. The second semifinals will be played today. Imperialist on the other side dropping down to the loser round four. And, you know, waiting either against Matty Smirks, King Mustafa, or Rick7774. Uh, and Smok is gonna wait for Sauron or Ave Havi. And, yeah, <laughs> crazy. Like, I didn't expect this outcome, by the way. What an incredible performance from the player from Ukraine. Well deserved the victory, definitely. Ukraine.